So I've actually got an eye beacon attached to my cat. Ruby is alive. Ruby's not going in. Oh, I want to dream for developer happiness. to talk about accounting for hackers. Uh, I'm Boris, you can reach me on Twitter or email me if you want. Uh, I'm founder of, of Astrails, Israeli web consulting company where we create awesome web and mobile applications since 2005. Nowadays we use Rails and React. We've been working on about 100 projects since 2005 and some of them were marketplaces. Uh, marketplaces are usually about money, so we are going to talk about money, uh, or actually about counting uh, the money. Many people find it very uh, stress-reducing technique, I mean passing bills from one hand to another, and it could actually produce uh, valuable psychological uh, benefits. So we are not talking, fortunately or unfortunately, about cash, we are going to uh, talk about virtual representation of a real money. So let's see if we can come up with some model uh, of how to count or proper what would be how to calculate the money. Uh, let's take an example of a marketplace, you know, any random marketplace like Alibaba, eBay, you know, Fiverr, whatever. We always have a seller who's using the marketplace to sell his projects, his services or uh, some pro products. We have a buyer who's going to pay for these products. And we have an app which is facilitating this procedure by selling products or services. So let's say we have a buyer which is going to spend $100 on some product. And the split would look like this. Ten, uh, nine, uh, $90 will go to a seller and $10 will stay as an uh, application fee. So we have actually two procedures here. First one is pay in when the money uh, gets to the marketplace. And the second one is pay out when not necessarily happening in the same time. Uh, so that's the basic, basic flow, right? Uh, marketplace can either touch or don't touch the money, meaning that the whole amount is transferred or not transferred to the marketplace account. Uh, examples of not touching money would be a PayPal split and chain payments. So in the single transaction, the first uh, shows, the uh, shows the split, when in the single transaction money is transferred to two accounts by PayPal, to a seller account and some fees to an uh, application account. And obviously buyer sees both of them. The, sec the, the second and the third one called a uh, chain, when the buyer only sees the first transaction, which sends the money from a buyer to seller, and then the Another transaction is happening when seller, when seller actually sends money automatically to the application. And the second one is when the uh, application or marketplace is primary receiver. This is the, 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 who, the person who gets the money in the chain called, called uh, a primary receiver. So if some kind of chargeback happens, both transactions are going to be rolled back. Uh, that's the point of PayPal split or chain. Uh, touching money, on the other hand, meaning that we, uh, as a marketplace, will receive the funds to our account and we can do with this money whatever we want. Uh, we can send the payouts later, we can decide whom to pay, whom not, we can decide when to do that, etc. So it just gives us much more uh, flexibility. Let's explore some naive implementation of that. Let's say we have a purchase which belongs to a product, which uh, belongs to a buyer and seller. And we have an amount and application fee there. And we will define two states like paid one, something that purchase uh, has been paid by a buyer. I mean, money transferred somehow to a marketplace account. 
And the second state, uh, also defined by scope there, uh, called withdrawn, meaning that we already paid our seller for this particular transaction. And we're going to set the fee somewhere in before validation, just to be sure that we, you know, give, uh, give uh, we are going to get our cut. And everything is quite cool here. We can calculate the uh, amount of money uh, or amount of uh, purchases that were not paid to sellers, or we can calculate how much uh, already paid them. We can make a drill down per seller to calculate how much this particular seller brought in sales or how much we have to pay him out. And looks like we're cool. But in real life, the situation is a little bit different. Sometimes in a single order, we have more than one seller. So this nice model won't just work. Even more, we can uh, sometimes, sometimes to escrow money on our accounts. This is how Airbnb, for example, works. You pay the money and they hold them until you actually uh, visit the place you've booked. So after you arrived or after you leave, depends on different conditions, they uh, pay out the money to the property owner. So escrow means that we will go to uh, hold the money until some particular uh, moment of time. And this particular moment of time called clearance. It's like uh, clearing a check in a bank. It takes some time. So the whole idea behind uh, clearance is that we try to uh, reduce the risk of a chargebacks. And minute after after some particular period of time, like you know, 15 days or 30 days or whatever, the risk of a chargeback is relatively low. We can theoretically support this uh, clearance in our old model. We just need to add some clearance clone, uh, clone that will go and identify if this particular purchase should be cleared or not, and add some new scope cleared and it would be more or less cool. But what we are going to do if we have a few sellers per uh, one order, do we have any solution? Yes, we do. It's called double entry bookkeeping. It was earliest known reference of this double entry bookkeeping by Luca Pacioli. I suppose that's the proper way of pronunciation. He was an Italian mathemat uh, mathematician who collaborated with Leonardo da Vinci and contributed to a field now known as accounting. In accounting, there are a few concepts that we are already aware of. Uh, there are accounts, they keep balances of some you know, amounts of money, like we have a bank savings account and the balance on this account is actually the money we have saved so, have saved so far. There are transactions, they are, they are about transferring money from an account to an account. And these are the operations responsible for money flows. Uh, and there is a ledger. Ledger is actually a place where all the transactions are stored, all the accounts and their balances. It could be a computer, it could be a notebook, whatever. That's, that's the idea of the ledger. Uh, debits and credits. Each transaction should touch at least two uh, accounts. And uh, one account would be credited and another account would be debited. And debiting and crediting of accounts actually increase or decrease their balances depending on the kind of this account and we will get to this in a minute. Uh, there are two uh, approaches to defining kinds of accounts. One's called traditional like British and we won't talk about it. Another one called uh, accounting equation. It's sometimes called American. And this is what we are going to talk about. It's widely used. Uh, and it has actually five types of accounts. First one is called asset. Uh, it could be cash, bank, or uh, you know, accounts receivable, to money that we receive and record on this account. Uh, it could be inventory, something that we, that we have. That's the definition of the asset. Uh, liability accounts, it could be accounts payable, so some accounts that we will uh, pay money from, uh, salaries, customer deposits, I mean something that we don't own, but we owe to pay this money sometimes to, uh, at some particular point of time to someone. Equity, capital, retaining earnings, funds, whatever, uh, something that is being held by us somewhere. Uh, income revenue, 
could be services rendered, sales, membership fees, etc. And some business expenses, whatever these expenses are. So the uh, accounting equation means that assets plus expenses equal to uh, equity plus liabilities plus in, uh, income, meaning that sum of balances of all the account uh, of the accounts of this type. We usually use only four assets, liability, income and expenses in marketplaces. Capital is uh, almost no used. So uh, what's happening when we debit or credit a particular account? We actually increase or decrease its value. By debiting asset account and expenses account, we actually increase its balance. And by uh, crediting them, we decrease it. Uh, equity, liability, and uh, income uh, will be decreased when debiting and increased by crediting. So let's have a look at purchase transaction from our first uh, example. We will debit asset account called PayPal and increase its value, meaning that now on our PayPal account will be $100 more than we were before the transaction. And we will credit the liability account of a seller withdrawable, meaning that seller at some particular point of time in the future probably maybe will withdraw this 90 bucks. And we can record an income or actually profit in this uh, example of $10. So we can see that uh, on the balance sheet, which is actually immediate state of all the financials, that we have assets of $100, we have liabilities of $90, and we have a profit uh, on the revenues account of 10. Uh, so we can see that uh, equation works, everything is cool. It could be even more complex uh, balance sheet when we have a few uh, sources for funding transactions. For example, users can purchase something using PayPal and Stripe and whatever. So we'll have a separate account for every payment system and the balance will reflect the balance on this payment system. So we will naturally have more liabilities and more profits if we made more sales, but we know exactly how this money came from because of the balances of these uh, asset accounts. So payout will look like that. We will uh, reduce our liabilities and reduce our assets on PayPal. So now we don't owe anything because our liabilities will go to zero and our PayPal account will be reduced by the same 90 bucks. Uh, by the same uh, 90 bucks, right. So this is the balance sheet. We have uh, $10 assets on the PayPal and all these $10 are ours recorded as a profit. So account equ equation is intact. We have only assets and uh, income in this, uh, in this example. Let's look at the more sophisticated example. And please raise your hands who's, who still follows me. Okay, cool. Uh, we have one buyer and we have two sellers. One gets 30 bucks, another gets uh, 60, and we record a, a $10 profit uh, in this particular sale. So the purchase transaction will look like that. We will uh, credit income account that we are going to call sales and the final balance of this account will always show us how many sales have we done so far. We can record some history and probably you know look every item that touched this transaction to have a immediate report of how, uh, how many sales have been done to a particular point of time. We will also uh, debit asset account on the PayPal because this is the money the, that we've got. We will record two liabilities for seller one and to seller two on a liabilities account called escrow. They don't have access to this account. This is internal account and we know that uh, amount on all a balance of all a sum of balances of all the escrow accounts is the money that we hold for someone for all the, for all our sellers actually and we'll record immediate expense of ninety dollars because this is what we actually going to spend or what we actually spent but not yet paid out uh, this is the balance sheet after this transaction we will have income of one hundred dollars assets that uh, supports this sale of one hundred dollars and we have ninety dollars of liability and already recorded expenses 
Now, the clearance after two weeks, 15 days, one month, whatever, means that these funds will be released and our sellers will be able to uh, withdraw this money or this money will be withdrawn automatically by some automatic payment using PayPal, Stripe, whatever. So we just move money from one liability account to another liability account and probably sellers has, uh, have access to their withdrawable accounts and now they, say, they see that they have 30 and $60 each on their uh, withdrawable accounts. And then goes the payout. We just move money from liability. Uh, we just reduce the liability account and reduce the PayPal asset account. So we have less money on our account on PayPal and we don't owe this money anymore to the seller. Uh, now the balance sheet will totally reflect that. We have $100 in income, $10 in assets on PayPal. Uh, I mean sales, $100 in sales, uh, $10 assets in, uh, on PayPal, we don't owe anything, and we have $90, or $90 of expenses. Now we can get to another document that is usually required uh, by accountants called income statement. The income statement actually shows for the, some period of time, usually months, how much sales have been done, $100, how much expenses, uh this sales uh, how many how much ex how many ex how what is the amount of expenses that we had to spend in order to facilitate these sales that would be more or less proper but long definition of this line uh, so we spent actually 19 dollars by paying out uh, our sellers and we have a net, a net income of 10 dollars very cool now let's talk a bit about uh, implementation. We've developed a Rails, Rails gem, Ruby gem, which is double entry counting for Rails. You can find uh, quite, a, quite a detailed documentation on GitHub. I'm just going to show a few examples how to define the uh, accounts and transactions. So, uh, System-wide accounts could be defined by just creating them and uh, subclassing or actually creating right uh, away a proper class of uh, account. We have assets account, liabilities account, etc, etc, etc. You can see all the documentation on the GitHub. Or uh, we can just uh, take this uh, uh, use the same debit credit account and just uh, call it by name or we can scope these accounts to some uh, parent like parent like seller for example seller can uh, has now escrow account and uh, withdrawable account both accounts are liability from our perspective we always use the definitions of the account from the perspective of marketplace and not from the seller because from the seller perspective that would be some asset account right this money that are uh, uh, now on some external accounts. So like for us, PayPal is an asset. For him, our, mar our marketplace is an asset. So we always look at this from, from perspective of one player, usually market, not, not usually, always the marketplace. Uh, and this is the transaction itself. Let's say we have some a model called payout. It belongs to seller. After create, we actually initiate the transaction itself. It should validate probably amount. And the transaction will look like that. We always do that inside the transaction. I mean, the regular database transaction. Payout.transaction do. Then we prepare a, an entry. And while preparing an entry, we can add a description for the whole transaction. We can set its kind, like withdrawal. Uh, we debit and credit appropriate, uh, appropriate accounts here. And we can also add a comment per line. Every line item, like debit or credit, called uh, item, uh, debit credit item inside the gem. So you can just see what's going on there. And by the way, each item, once transaction is recorded, also holds the balance of the particular account after the transaction. That allows us to go back in time and actually have a snapshot of the financial system at any point of time at all. 
And if, if the validations are passed, we will set the state of this uh, payout to paid and probably set uh, paid at. By the way, I usually use uh, time now UTC and not current. I'm going to change that probably. Uh, and then we're going to save the whole payout again. So uh, we can treat the ledger as uh, cached values of uh, all our accounts and all the balances that are stored in our accounts. It means that we still have to develop the uh, domain-specific operations like order, order item, purchase, withdrawal, refund or chargeback or whatever other operations we have in order to be able to recover all the ledger from zero, even if we delete the whole ledger. I mean, there should be no transaction in the system that is created from console or just manually somehow, you know, edited in, not edited definitely, but not, you know, modifi modified somehow from other source. I mean, for every transaction should be a domain-specific operation which was the reason why this transaction was created in the first place. So we can just, you know, drop these tables and recreate everything from the scratch based on the, uh, based on these records that have timestamps and some business logic of, of the application. So why use double entry bookkeeping? A few reasons. First of all, uh, transparency of the cash flows. I mean, how money actually distributed in the system, when and why? The second one is the balance sheet, which uh, gives balance sheet and income statement, which give immediate access to current system state from financial perspective. And the obvious one, preventing bugs and uh, fraud. I mean, the accounting equation should work all the time. So next time when you're going to count money, you will know that there is a very simple math behind it. Thank you.